Happiness through curiosity on the Ranveer Show. Welcome to TRS Clips. That's one of the names associated with you a lot. There's lots of brown brothers who actually mm-hmm. refer to you as a sort of new age Steve Jobs. <laughs> but I think there's brothers from all over the world who do that. Are you aware of this comparison? Uh, not really. I, I mean, I've seen maybe like two tweets, but I don't. <laughs> I'm not sure it's a thing. No, it's a, it's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. When we we were figuring out how to construct this mm-hmm. particular episode, this whole Steve Jobs angle was thrown in by everyone mm-hmm. in the team. Yeah, I was kind of a Steve Jobs fanboy when I was younger. I didn't know who he was until I didn't even watch the first iPhone keynote. I didn't even I didn't know who he was. I knew Apple, the mm-hmm. brand. Mm-hmm. I think the first time I saw a keynote was the i the first iPad probably. Mm. But then when I started no- knowing about this person, I was really fascinated, and the biography that came out and all that. The Ashton Kutcher one. Uh, the 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 book. Oh, okay. Came out. Have you seen the movies? I think the best movie is um, Pirates of Silicon Valley, like right. a really old movie. Mm. I think the new ones. It's, it's about Microsoft versus yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Apple, right? Yeah, I think the new ones are <laughs> kind of shit. Do you think if Steve Jobs had been alive, we would be looking at a different human reality today? Most likely, yeah. You think, need those yeah. world leaders, like thought leaders, in yeah. technology. Yeah, and I think um, what's really a big shame is that. It takes many years for a person to get all this uh, life experience to be able to contribute back to society. So, say maybe the first thirty years of our lives, we're just learning, and only from like thirty to sixty-five are we contributing. Can I give you a slightly alternative uh-huh. take on Steve Jobs? Sure. Um, I've been obsessed with him in the same way that you have, but not from the business perspective, mm. but from his whole spiritual journey in India. That's actually what got me into Steve mm. Jobs. Really, I don't know too much about it. So I believe this is when he got fired from Apple for the first time before he took over Pixar. Uh, he had this hiatus where he came to India and he discovered yoga and things mm-hmm. like that. The book that I was just telling you about, the autobiography of a yogi. Oh it, yeah, that's why I heard about it. Yeah, he gave it out. I mean, his family gave it out at his funeral yeah. because he used to read it every year. And what you basically gain from that book is a uh, unfiltered, like spiritual wisdom mm. uh, from ancient Indian culture. Uh, but what I believe he gained, and I've read that book every year myself, in the search for trying to understand what Steve Jobs gained, and the Indian cricket team captain Virat Kohli is the same. He also mm-hmm. keeps reading that book. And these are two of my idols. I got very deep into that book because of these two people who I look mm. up to that much. Got into the kind of meditations and yogas from that particular school, and I felt like my creativity really went up, both in terms of business as well as content. So I would nudge you to read mm. that book. I should read it. There is there is a lot of deep stuff in it. I read this other book. Um, I think it's also like some form of Buddhism, some like. Uh, Swa Himalayan uh, Swa something, okay. Um, but distilled in a modern format. It's Bodhisattvas, called, maybe it's called uh, Atma Moon, and uh, also really good. Helped me a lot. What did you gain? Uh, mainly, I think the main takeaway is that you're gonna die, mm. and um, all of us kind of know it from a. From a philosophical level, but we don't really understand what's going to happen. But when you really understand what's going to happen, then all there that's left to do is to play. I think that's that was a really powerful uh, takeaway for me. By play, you mean enjoy yourself in the moment right now. Yeah, enjoy yourself in the moment, and there's nothing to fear. Mm. Is that why there's so much happiness in your eyes? Like I feel like you're a really happy and contented person, and people in your position are often not. And trust me, I've met people mm. who are powerful yeah. and who are doing things in life, and most people I've met in your position are not. But I get a very happy energy from you. Uh, it, it it comes and goes. It's a roller coaster for okay. me, just like for I think most other people. Okay, fair. But at this point, you're happy because yeah, you're on I'm the happy. Ranveer show. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean. We got to talk a little bit about Apple because mm-hmm. Apple comes up a lot when anyone even Google's your name. Yeah. What do you think that organization is doing wrong right now in terms of we spoke about a lack of reinvention and mm-hmm. a lack of innovation, but what specifically? Say I give you uh you know the reins to Apple. If if I tell you that okay, Carl, you're in charge of Apple now, 
what would you do? I mean, imagine for a second that nothing didn't exist. I think Apple is as close as you can get to perfect ex execution as a company. Okay. So I wouldn't say they're doing anything wrong. I just think that because they're so big and so successful, there's opportunity for somebody else to come in. Because they're so big and successful, there's opportunity yeah. for someone else. When they're so big, they have to cater to everybody. So then you cannot be special to anybody. So if the, another company is willing to focus on a smaller group of consumers, but serve them even better, I think there's a lot of gaps in the market. So mm. from a company perspective, if you look at their stock price, their market cap, they've been doing everything right. In the latest uh, WWDC event, they announced that they're launching buy now, pay later as well. And um, you know, that's going to help them grow their services revenue by a lot. So I think they're doing everything right. If I was there, I, I don't think I could have done a better job. Um, but when they came out in the 80s and 90s, um, it wasn't the Apple of today. Because when they came and started making the computers, there were already a lot of other companies making computers. And the thing was back then, all those computers looked the same. Either a gray box or a black box. And they had the same hardware inside and the same software. And then you had Apple, who was uh, very differentiated from a design perspective. You had these translucent, uh, semi-transparent iMacs. And it ran a different software inside. And instead of trying to be everything for everybody, they targeted the creatives. Eventually, Apple became the best. They made the best tools for the creatives. And because of that, the Apple brand got associated with creativity. And that's what really pulled the masses in because everybody wants to consider themselves creative. So by using an Apple product 15 years ago, you got that creative identity. Imagine being in a Starbucks using a MacBook when everybody else was using PCs. You felt special. But today, not anymore because everybody around you has Apple products. Mm. So I just think, I don't think they're doing anything wrong. This is the right strategy for their company. If we ever get to that size, that's probably the same strategy that we'll have to pursue as well. Because as a company, you just got to keep moving forward and keep growing. Thank you for watching this clip. If you want to learn more about this topic, we've curated a playlist just for you. And here's a link to the whole episode.